Hello friends, it's Lisa and welcome to yet another weekly vlog for the Magical Readathon. We're kind of in the like last kind of full week of the readathon. There are a few days next week left of August, but we kind of almost have like just like a week left of this readathon. So definitely need to do some reading this week. I think I'm in good shape with my Magical Readathon TBR, but there are a few other things that I'm currently reading and want to read this month. So I'm going to just keep these vlogs going until I finish everything or at least try to finish everything. Thing. But like I said, Magical Readathon TBR were doing well. I actually today is Tuesday, so I didn't update anything yesterday, but I did read and finish something on my Magical Readathon TBR yesterday. So for the inscription class, I had to do two prompts or read two books. For that class, I had to do the O level and the Q level. So for the O level, I read The Click, which I read last week, and that was something. And that was to read a childhood favorite. And then for the Q level, that was to read a graphic novel, comic, or manga. So I ended up reading Nimona, which I kind of vlogged a little bit yesterday when I started that. And I am so mad at myself for waiting so long to read this book. This is a book that I have put on a lot of TBRs for readathons or have like almost put it on TBRs for readathons and things like that. And I've just never picked it up. Somehow something has always changed and I've never read it. But this was the year I finally read it. <laughs> it has only taken like over three years for me to finally pick this up and I loved it. I thought it was so great. I ended up giving it five stars. I sometimes with graphic novels, like I love graphic novels, but sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle to connect with the story or the characters just because it is a different format than what I typically read. And it's just a different way of getting to know the characters and the story. And for me, sometimes they go so quick that I don't always connect with the characters or the story. But I did not have that problem with this at all. I was immediately just like so into it. It was so funny and the characters were so great. The kind of relationship, the kind of almost like found family aspect of Nimona and Ballister. Is that what his name was? There were some funny uh, character names in this book. Yeah, Lord Ballister Blackheart. Uh, I loved their like dynamic. They're like, it was like almost a father daughter dynamic. And that was just so like fun to read and see develop because this whole book is following Nimona and him as she decides to become his sidekick. And at first he's really reluctant and like doesn't want her to be his sidekick. He doesn't need one. But then she kind of weasels her way in anyway. And he ends up being like, okay, I guess you can be my sidekick. And he's just very like against it at first and just like barely tolerating her. But but then he kind of ends up taking her under his wing and they kind of create this bond and it was just so cute to see that relationship kind of evolve and become this almost like found family aspect. So yeah, Blackheart is the villain and he's always going up against this guy. What is his name? The hero. He's Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing those names right. <laughs> but the two of them kind of are these enemies at this point, but it's clear that they have a history, a romantic history, and that something has happened that kind of causes them to go different ways and for Golden Loin <laughs> to become the hero and for Blackheart to kind of become the villain. I feel like Golden Loin is not how you say it, but maybe it is. <laughs> but yeah, I just really loved it. I thought the characters were great. I thought the humor and the dialogue was great. There were emotional moments. The plot was really interesting and well paced and like the pieces of different characters backgrounds and how they played into the plot and just everything. I thought it was so well done and I feel like this is probably one of the best graphic novels I've read. Like I just feel like it's so impressive to me when a graphic novel can really make me connect with the characters in the story as well as maybe a normal like fiction book that has like 500 pages for me to get connected with characters. I think it's so impressive when you can connect with a story and its characters in a shorter amount of pages but also in a very different format. I just thought it was so well done and I believe this is being adapted into a movie as well and I cannot wait to see it. So yeah I just absolutely loved it five stars. So great. And that also was able to complete the inscription class for me. was able to complete both my O and Q levels. So now that's done. And now I only have one class left to do. I have one prompt, one book left to read. So I still need to do the demonology class. And the prompt for that for the O level is to read a fantasy. So I'm going to be picking up Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the final book in the Inferno Devices trilogy. I'm so excited to finish it. I know 
I'm about to be sobbing, but it'll be fun. <laughs> it's also the August book for the Shadowhunters read-along and also my final prompt. So definitely have a lot of reasons to pick this up and get this read this month. I'm so excited. I can't wait to be back with these characters. I can't wait to just be an emotional wreck reading this whole book. This whole book just makes me sob. I think I start sobbing page one and don't stop until I finish. It's just the way it is. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be what I pick up next. And I'm also still listening to The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, which is the group book for the Studio Ghibli readathon. I think I'm like 30% of the way through that. I'm going to try and listen and finish that this week as well. And also, if I have time, I am going to try and pick up The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do this, but we're going to try because this is the next book series that the Fantasy Series Book Club is reading. They are starting The Diviners in August, and then for the next few months, they'll be making their way through the rest of the series. And I have read The Diviners before. I read it, I think, October of 2020. So it's been almost two years, and I really don't remember a whole lot from this book. And I think if I were to continue on with the series, which I do want to, I would need to reread it anyway. So I figured now is as good a time as any. Why don't I pick it up, reread it with the fan series book club, and that will actually like motivate me to continue on with the series. So I am going to try and read this as well. I have two rereads going on this week, but we'll see if I can get through it. I'm hoping because I have already read it before. It's a reread it'll go quickly, but we'll see. I know I enjoyed it the first time I read it, so I think it'll be a fun book to reread and I'll be able to get familiar with the characters and the plot and the magic and all that again and hopefully be able to move on with the rest of the series. So yeah, this week the reading plans was Nimona, which check, already did it, but Clockwork Princess, The Diviners, and The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I don't know, I don't know if that's all gonna happen this week, but I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> and also really quickly, I did want to show the bingo board for the Studio Ghibli readathon. I I have done a pretty good job with this readathon without even really trying. I was just kind of counting the books I was already planning on reading this month for this readathon, and I've gotten a few bingos. I've managed to complete a lot of the prompts. There's a few that I haven't yet, and I'm gonna have to figure out if what I am reading will be able to account for the ones I haven't completed yet. But yeah, I'm very happy with what I've managed to read for this readathon without even really trying to complete things. I'm doing pretty well for just kind of winging it, so very happy with that. But yeah, that's it. I just to say hello, welcome you to the vlog, and hopefully I can read all of the things that I want to read this week. <laughs> Well, hello friends. Happy Wednesday. So I wanted to give an update because I'm now 50% of the way through The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. And I tried to give like a synopsis of this book yesterday when I intro this vlog. And I don't know if I left it in or not because I don't think I made much sense at all. So I might just edit it out. I'm going to give a better synopsis now. We're following this character, Mina, and her homeland has always been swept up in a lot of floods and storms and they believe that the sea god is kind of forcing that upon them. So each year they basically sacrifice someone, a girl, to be the sea god's bride, hoping that one of these times that that will be his true bride and then that will like appease him and then the sea god will finally stop, you know, causing all of these storms. And at the beginning of this book, Mina's brother, the girl that he's in love with, is the one who is sacrificed and her brother goes after the girl that he's in love with and you're not supposed to follow the girls that are sacrificed, you're not supposed to chase after them because that will cause you to be killed. So Mina basically, in her attempt to save her brother, instead sacrifices herself to be the bride for the sea god. So she gets taken to the spirit realm and she ends up finding out that the sea god is in like an enchanted sleep, I guess, and she has to try and wake him up to kind of make all of this suffering and everything, all these storms and stuff stop. And she ends up meeting Shin as well as a few other like people and a few other creatures that kind of help her along the way. And so far I am finding it very interesting. It did take me a little bit to kind of get my bearings and like understand the world because there's a lot of information that's given in the first like handful of chapters of this book that I was just overwhelmed. There were a lot of characters, a lot of names, 
names being said and I was just like where are we what's happening I don't know who anyone is <laughs> but now I'm 50% of the way through the book so I definitely have a better understanding of what's going on I find a lot of the like mythology and folklore that kind of involve the creatures that are in the spirit realm I find all of that very interesting I'm intrigued to see where the story is going how they're going to wake the sea god there's also this red string of fate thing that means that Mina has this red string attached to somebody and they find out that that means that they're basically like their destiny their soulmate so I think that that's really fun too I don't think I've really read a ton of books where there's like a soulmate trope I feel like whenever I've read anything to do with soulmates or anything like that it's been fan fiction <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> but I don't think I've really read a ton of books with that kind of soulmate aspect to it so I think that that's really fun and I'm like into the kind of dynamic between Mina and the person that her red string of fate is attached to I don't know if it's a spoiler to say who it is so I'm just not going to say yeah I mean so far I'm intrigued I'm excited to see where it goes and I am enjoying it I think not loving it but I'm enjoying it but that's all I've kind of been doing for reading I still have yet to pick up Clockwork Princess but I'm hoping to pick it up tonight or at least start it at some point today I definitely want to at least start it and make some progress in it because I do want to read it I was just like thinking about this series yesterday and I started getting emotional so like I'm excited to read it again I just have to actually like pick it up so I'm hoping to do that today and I also have a exciting event thing that I'm attending virtually this evening. Marissa Meyer is doing a little like Zoom event, kind of like she did last year with Gilded. She's doing another one for Cursed. I think there's like going to be like a Q&A section. She's going to be talking about the like pre-order campaign for Cursed, which is the sequel to Gilded. And I've already pre-ordered it. So whatever the pre-order incentive gifts are, I'm going to get them. It's going to happen. I don't know what they are yet though. So I'm excited to see what they are. I really liked the Gilded pre-order gifts, so I'm excited to see what they are for Cursed, but that's this evening, and I'm excited to watch that. I don't think it's going to be a super long event. I don't remember the one last year being super long, so I'm hoping I can watch that and still do some reading. But yeah, that's kind of the plan for later on today, but I did also want to do a little bit of an unboxing. I got an Amazon package today. I was on a Zoom call with Darian. We were just chatting. She was telling me about this book she had just finished and she told me to add it to my wish list. And then here we are. We have a package. So I kind of knew that this was coming. So I know what this is, but I'm very excited about it. Why can I never open these packages? <laughs> oh, because I'm probably not, I'm not cutting on the right spot. Maybe that's why. Oh, wow. I'm so surprised. <laughs> You're welcome. From Darian. I feel like I have another note from Darian from something else that she sent me that says the exact same thing. It just says, you're welcome. Darian truly treats me so well, but very exciting. It's Blood Scion by Deborah Filet. I do not know how to say that last name. I will have to look it up, but this cover is stunning. I'm obsessed. I feel like I always liked this cover, like looking at it online, but seeing it in person stunning. Darian was saying that this has been compared to An Ember in the Ashes, which is like one of my favorite series of all time. So I just feel like I'm really going to like this. I think Darian gave it four stars, four or four and a half stars. I can't remember. I think it was four. And I think Casey read this and gave it five stars. So that is very exciting. That fact that both of my besties gave it really high ratings. I feel like that's just like, that's just a sign that I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Darian, for getting this for me. You did not need to do that. <laughs> when she was ordering it, I was like, Darian, you do not have to send me this. She told me to put it on my wish list. And I was like, oh, you're right. I should do that. I wasn't thinking like so that she could buy it for me, but then she was buying it. I was like, Darian, <laughs> you do not have to do that. But she did because she's a very nice gal. So thank you so much, Darian. I'm so excited excited to read it. But yeah, okay. I just wanted to unbox that on camera because am I a booktuber if I get book mail and don't show it to you people? I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully later on tonight I can do some reading, fingers crossed. And I'm very excited for the Marissa Meyer event. I think it's going to be really fun. That's it. I'm going to chat with you all when I actually do some reading or for the Marissa Meyer event, whatever happens first. <laughs> okay, it's been a little bit. It's now 7.30. Have I read anything since I last updated you? No, and the Marissa Meyer thing is starting soon. So maybe I'll read while I wait for that to start. But I wanted to just film a little clip because I have a pumpkin 
cider. It's a hard cider. And it's from the, I think it's called Down East. And I've tried like their normal apple cider. They have a winter blend cider, which is my personal favorite. I think it's so good. But this is the pumpkin cider. Oh, okay. That smells less scary than I thought. I, for some reason, was thinking it was going to be really pumpkin-y, really sweet. And I kind of wanted to film me sipping it and trying it. <laughs> is this the content y'all signed up for when you subscribed? Probably not, but you're getting it anyway. To be honest, it just tastes like a normal apple cider. Okay, no, there's kind of a pumpkin-y taste. <laughs> I am not, we don't do this here. I don't know what to say. It tastes mostly like an apple cider with like a little hint of the pumpkin, which I kind of like. It's not like too pumpkin-y, it's not too sweet because of that. That's why I was kind of scared. I was like, if it's pumpkin, does that mean it's gonna be really sweet? But it's just like a nice little subtle pumpkin-y taste. I think I like it. It's also because it's like, I don't know, you probably can't tell in this lighting, but it's like a little bit more orange than the normal ciders because of the pumpkin, so that's kind of fun. Anyway, can you tell I'm in the fall vibes? Uh, it's going to be like almost 90 degrees out tomorrow, and I'm like, cheers to fall. Um, anyways, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, in like 25 minutes, the Marissa Meyer event is going to be happening, so what I might do is just read until then. I'm going to start Clocker Princess, read that until the event, and then me and Darian, I think after that ends, are going to jump on a little Zoom call chat, do some reading. So it's going to be a nice little cozy evening, even though it's quite warm, but we're pretending it's not happening. It's going to be a cozy evening and I'm very excited. dictionary right here <laughs> just some light reading oh yeah absolutely <laughs> that is chalky just can count to my goodreads goal um <laughs> can i help you <laughs> oh i thought you were gonna read a, something oh <laughs> <laughs> oh okay um <clears throat> kelly day <laughs> oh what does that mean? What does it mean? La, or la qualité. Manière d'être non mesurable d'une chose qui donne une valeur plus ou moins grande sur cette quantité. La qualité d'un produit, marchandise de bonne, de mauvaise qualité, améliorer la qualité, rapport qualité prix, bonne qualité, des produits de qualité. <laughs> the character d'une personne qui correspond à une valeur This is a very long... Simply, <laughs> what are you saying to me right now? <laughs> wow, there she is. <laughs> there it is. I see it in your music. Oh! Thanks. I don't even need to put music <laughs> when I edit. None. Thank you. That's how it goes. You're so right. <laughs> All right, hello, my friends. Happy Friday. I don't believe I've checked in since before the Marissa Meyer event on Wednesday, so I thought I would check in with you all. But speaking of that Marissa Meyer event, watch that had a great time. It was very similar to the event she did for Gilded last year, kind of a similar like setup and similar events, but she did announce what the like pre-order 
campaign is, what the gifts are going to be for that. So you'll get like a short story from Guild's perspective from the first book. So that's kind of cool. And also she's doing another poster. The same artist is creating another poster for this year's pre-order. And it's going to be of all of like the main couples from all of her series. And I'm wondering if she's going to do all the main couples from Luna Chronicles or just Cinder and Kai. I don't know. But I simply will sob <laughs> if Cress and Thorn are on there. But it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited about that. I definitely want to get a frame for both the one that I got last year with the pre-order for Gilded and this one. I want to get frames for them and put them up somewhere on my walls. I'll probably wait until the pre-order for this year that poster comes in just because I don't know how big it's going to be. I imagine it's going to be the same size as the other poster but I definitely want to hang those up because the art is really cute and obviously like it just makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah other than that I have been doing some reading. I, I think I'm like 60% of the way through The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I'm still enjoying it. I don't know if it's me and the audiobook or the actual book itself but I have definitely been like confused on certain things. I think just certain things with the world building and the characters and the kind of magic system and everything. I've gotten a little confused and I've definitely had to like re-listen to a lot of parts. It's not like I'm doing anything that is taking up too much attention while I'm listening to the audiobook, but I've definitely gotten confused here and there. But again, that could just be me and the fact that I am listening to it as an audiobook. I don't know, but I am still enjoying it. I am interested about like the romance and where certain things are going to go. I think I was saying that there is like the soulmate kind of trope in this and I'm interested to see how that all plays out and I don't think I'm that confused. I just think there's certain things that I didn't understand at the beginning that now when they get brought up later on in the book I'm like kind of just starting to understand what they're talking about so it's going fine. I'm not hating it but I'm also like not obsessed with it but it is an enjoyable audiobook I guess. It is a little confusing for me but it is enjoyable enough so I think I am like 60% of the way through that so I'm gonna try and maybe finish it this weekend. I kind of want to do a lot of reading this weekend. I'm also making progress in Clockwork Princess. I'm on page 200 exactly, which is the start of chapter 9, and I would love to maybe like finish this this weekend as well. I would love to be able to finish this and The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and start and make a decent amount of progress in The Diviners this weekend. Who knows if that's going to happen, but I'm going to try. <laughs> this is going really quickly. Like as I'm reading it, I am reading the words on the pages very quickly. And I think that's just because Cassandra Clare's writing is just very easy to read. But also I have read this book before and I just think that that familiarity with the story and everything is making it a lot quicker and faster for me to read. And so I'm maybe thinking I can finish it this weekend and then I can also get all of my emotions out in a shorter amount of time because this book, every time I've picked it up, I have cried. There have been tears in my eyes every time I have picked up this book. This book just hurts my feelings. <laughs> There's also been a lot of moments in this book that I have been waiting for them to happen the whole time of this reread. Like without spoilers, I will give like no context, but there's a part with a couple of characters and scones, which that part just makes me really happy. And then there's also a part where Jem gives Tessa a gift and that part, I was literally crying last night reading that part. It just, it gets me every time. I just love Jem. I love Tessa. I love Will. I love how much they all love each other. It just makes me emotional. And I, I just, I can't not cry at every thing in this book. <laughs> so we'll see if I'm able to read as much as I want to this weekend. Plus, I did start my free trial of Kindle Unlimited. I have like the three month free trial of it and there's a few things on there that I would like to read and like maybe I'll start them this weekend too. I just want to read all of the things. I'm kind of in one of those moods where I want to read everything but I'm also just like not reading <laughs> but I still want to read everything. It's like I'm overwhelmed by all of my options and all of the things that I want to read that I'm just not doing any reading but I think this weekend I'm going to maybe even do my own like more low-key and chilled like 24-hour readathon just to like put a little bit of pressure on me to actually read and make a lot of progress in all my current reads this weekend and be able to start some new things that I want to read. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah that's kind of my plan for this weekend. I really just want to do a lot of reading and be able to finish and make a lot of progress in all the things that I'm reading and want to read. That's the goal. We'll see if it happens. I feel like I always say like, oh, I'm going to just spend the whole weekend reading and then I just don't even look at a book <laughs> the whole weekend. So hopefully that's not what happens this time. Hopefully I actually read like I say I want to. <laughs> but I will continue to document me reading this because even though I've already cried, the tears are just going to keep coming. It's just going to get worse. I'm just going to continue to sob. The whole like 
probably this whole section, the whole like second half of the book, I'm just gonna be a mess. So if I do cry, I will document it because of course I will. <laughs> It's time for me to wrap up this vlog, but I'm very excited because I did finish all of the books that I needed to for the Magical Readathon. <laughs> yeah, I finished all of the classes, all of the books that I needed to to complete my career for the Magical Readathon, which was the Feywild Cartographer career, and I'm very proud of myself. I also thought that I could go over all of the books and all of the classes that I completed in this readathon this month. Just a nice quick little recap and wrap up of what I read for this readathon. So for the elemental studies class, I read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. For animal studies, I read The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. For astronomy, I read Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. For alchemy, I read The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. For inscription, I had to get an O and a Q level. So for the O level, I read The Click by Lacey Harrison. And then for the Q level, I read Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. And finally, for demonology, I finished Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. And I meant to grab the book before I started filming this. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> but yeah, I finished Clockwork Princess this weekend. This was the last book that I needed to read for the readathon. And I finished it. And of course, I gave it five stars. I was an absolute mess reading this entire book, really. But it's just, it's just such a painful book. I was crying quite a bit reading the like second half of this book. This whole book I had moments where I was tearing up but then like the second half it's just really painful and then she was like in the last 100 pages like well I'm already making them suffer I might as well just like pile it all on and just make them completely miserable. So I was just a mess reading this entire book. I could not stop crying and what's concerning is I was filming me crying reading this book as a normal mentally stable person does for the internet and I realized I wasn't filming me crying when I was crying the hardest. Like there was a part in the epilogue that where I was full on like sobbing and I realized I forgot to hit record so what you see of me sobbing isn't even the worst that it was which is slightly concerning but it's okay I'm fine I am completely fine <laughs> I'm actually not okay I finished this book and I was like you know what I should do I should make it like a yearly thing of rereading this trilogy that's not something a mentally stable person would say <laughs> me through my tears was like wow I should reread this every year <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm not okay, but we know that. But yeah, Clockwork Princess was the last book that I had to read for the Magical Readathon. That was on my TBR, so very happy about that. As for the other books I was reading this weekend, because I did have some other reading plans, I still have not finished The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea audiobook. I think because a lot of this weekend, if I was reading, it was like I was physically reading. Like I read a lot of Clockwork Princess and started my next book, so I didn't really have a ton of opportunities to listen to my audiobook. I'm now 70% of the way through The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, so I made a little bit of progress, but not much. But I think I'm going to do at least one more vlog to kind of wrap up all of my reads for August and maybe like the first few reads I read of September, just because I did want to vlog the whole month of August. Even though I did finish my Magical Readathon TBR early, I'm going to keep the vlogs going at least for one more week. So you will get my final thoughts on that in next week's vlog. But yeah, still reading that. I think I have like three or so hours left of that audiobook. So definitely will be finishing it in next week's vlog. And I, as of right now, my thoughts are still pretty much the same. It's not doing anything that I'm hating, but I'm also not like necessarily obsessed with it by any means. Like it's just a fine read for me so far. But I also did start the other book I wanted to start this weekend, which is The Diviners by Libba Bray. And I'm on page 167. I read most of that yesterday. And I want to kind of get through this book quickly because it is a reread and I want to get to a lot of the new books that I haven't read yet. I have acquired a lot of books in the past month because of my birthday and everything. And I want to read some of those. I also started my Kindle Unlimited free trial. It's like a three month free trial. So there's a lot of things on there I want to read. And now I'm just rereading things I've already read. <laughs> so I definitely want to finish this up so I can get into new and exciting books that I have not read yet. And also this book is kind of slow. I feel like for the first like half of it at least is what I remember. It's still pretty slow at this point, just getting introduced to all the different characters and the kind of magic system, I guess, but not really because we still don't really fully understand what the diviners are and if that's what these characters are. So yeah, it is a bit slow and it also is a book that I've already read. So I am trying to read it kind of quickly. I have little like sticky notes of sections I want to get to each day so I can finish it in the span of like three days and before the month of August ends. So I'm going to be working on this in next week's vlog as well, but I did start it. So I'm very happy with what I read this weekend. I did manage to read mostly everything that I wanted to. I wanted to finish Clockwork Princess, start The Diviners, and I wanted to finish The Girl Fell Beneath the Sea, which I didn't do, but that's okay because I will finish it this next week. <laughs> but yeah, very happy that I finished my Magical Readathon TBR and completed all the prompts for my career. Definitely let me know if you are participating in the Magical Readathon, how it's going for you. I think by the time this vlog goes up, it's going to be going up the 1st of September, I think. So the Magical Readathon at this point has ended. Let me know how the readathon went for you, what you read, what your career was, if you had any standout reads of the month, even if you didn't participate in the Magical Readathon, I'd love to know. If you have any books that you read in August that stood out to you and that you really loved. But I think that's going to be it for this week's reading vlog. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.